So today's surgery cases, as we discussed on the weekend, planning, we done the evaluations and all. The first case we're going to tackle is this uh, surgeon who had LASIK Octavia, right? So LASIK Octavia is in the cornea and has become like a cone, surgical care, mm -hmm. if he had surgery in Russia. And his surgeons actually in Washington, D.C. have had him fly over. He actually fixed his first eye with lensoplasty mm -hmm. and brought him to 2020. He's flown back for his second eye. So now, I'm actually going to leave his cornea where it is because even though it's ectatic, it's stable and measurable. Right. Mm -hmm. What I always tell a teach doctor is don't get confused with topographies and so many things, even though we have all the technologies in the world. Look for measurability and stability. So no matter how bad the cornea is, if you can measure through it, which we did, and we know we are accurate because we did the first time, and that's 2020 without glasses. So same logic, and I'll go and fix his lens and use it in such a way to cancel the optics of the irregular cornea. That's why lensoplasty. Mm -hmm. It's a surgery like a cataract surgery, but again, like we do, no anesthesia, no stitches, mm -hmm. and fix them back as best as we can. You'll be free for the first time in years. Correct? Mm -hmm. Now, next patient we are seeing after that, we're going to fix with that surgeon's wife, remember? Mm -hmm. Traumatic cataract. So, again, if you take the eyeball, and here's the cornea, the cataract is here. Let's make it mm -hmm. a little bigger. And here, if you see, it's a cataract. Mm -hmm. She's not a normal cataract, otherwise, 2020. Okay. And plus this lens is actually tilted because it's traumatic. It's actually hanging like this, if you remember, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning the zonules that are holding the lens are nearly broken over there, like a hammer, mm -hmm. because trauma. So what we have to do is very carefully here, going to the eye, make our opening in the perfect circle. Mm -hmm. That is important because even if this turns out to be a very weak capsule and I have to do maneuvers to fix everything, I have a nice platform to put my lens on mm -hmm. and then capture it in the anterior bag mm. and still keep it away from the front of the cornea. Got it? So even though she has a bad history of trauma, she's been blind for so long, we'll get this hard cataract out, we'll fix the zonules here, but I want the rexis to be small mm. and concise and circular. Right? So that's my big aim in this case. Uh, next case is um, uh, that patient from New York, right? The RK1. So again, the eyeball and here's the cornea. Let me, let's just get the cornea here so then you're done and eyeball is in the back so that's fine we're not concerned with that right now and then she has a lens in the eye right young patient in her late mm -hmm. 50s and the cornea has full thickness cuts all over real characteristic mm -hmm. so what this does is two things one is difficult to enter this eye because we also want to maintain our aesthetics no stitches no uh, what do you call it? not to make the incision wrong mm -hmm. all that will induce astigmatism stitch will induce astigmatism but she's going to fly out in two days like all our RK people. And I'm planning to go inside the eye work on the lens. Again, same thing. Even though the cornea looks horrible, it's measurable and stable. And we're doing something ahead of time. I could have done laser plasty with the laser and she'd be seeing beautiful. But because she's in her 50s, late 50s, she will still need to come back for cataract surgery. So I'm in fact giving her a benefit going inside the eye working on this through the cut cornea. And we put in a toric lens technology, get the high regular astigmatism go through these cuts but without disturbing anything and come out in four minutes and mm -hmm. we're done that's her plan so then she fly back for her second eye uh the guy we just spoke to uh, from australia uh, if you recollect very high caraconus young patient so because the cornea is no longer what do i go for visual and structural. lovely because he's not visual because his doctors couldn't measure him in australia mm -hmm. so he's structural so in this case again he's very young 30 right mm -hmm. And what we'll do here is we'll go and put a ring, an intact in his cornea. If you look at it in his profile, mm -hmm. the ring will go like this. And that will lift off his topography. You saw how tilted it was mm -hmm. with the higher regular astigmatism. We correct the astigmatism. We also stabilize them because that ring lacks like a, mm -hmm. uh, a brace, yeah. like you handcuff the cornea. And give this young guy his life back by putting the cornea back into shape. So I tell them this is like taking their polio legs, which are weak and mm -hmm. curved. And at least making him walk with that leg. Then, if needed, we can cross link. But because he's 30 and the ring will take care of it, I'd rather let him wait. So, if you don't need to cross link, why do it? So, stabilize him, make him see excellent with his broken cornea and give him his life back, right? That's that patient. Then, we have the other patient you've seen, the wife of our um, Eddie, the guy who's come back after 17 years. So, she has a very, very high myopic eye, right? Very long eyeball. Mm -hmm. Plus, she has fused dystrophy of the cornea, which is a disease in the back of the cornea. 
Now, at the same time, she had very dense cataract with pseudo exfoliation, we call that, right? Where there's like dandruff on the, uh, which is a pseudo exfoliation of the lens capsule. Again, my aim is I want perfection. And we don't want her to feel any pain, and yet we are doing it without anesthesia, just snubbing mm -hmm. drops, right? In our suit. So I will go in now. This case, what is my difficulty level? What am I expecting? Lots. Lots, but also I want to be worried about a lot. I cannot touch the cornea up, that's mm -hmm. fuchs dystrophy. I want to make sure my pupil dilates. If not, I'm ready to dilate it manually, correct? Mm -hmm. Then I also want to do my perfect rexus in front of the right of the pseudo exfoliation. I want to get the cataract out at the same time. The chamber is going to be very deep. She's mm -hmm. like around 29 millimeters. So every time I'll be in the eye, it'll go down out of focus. Mm -hmm. All that while I'm operating, I don't want to create pressure and cause pain to her. Mm -hmm. That's how we plan that out. So in all these cases that we'll see today, whether it's our case, scars, we are operating on patients for cataract to their corneas, which are like horribly scarred. I can't even see through it. Mm -hmm. But the whole point here is the cornea is measurable. And I know that because we have all these technologies, I want master 700, I want master 500, we have the Quantel A-scan concepts, right? Back scan concept, then we have the Penacami XL wave, the eye trace technologies, we have the OCTs. All this when I look at, it tells me measurability and possibility. So I don't ever look at difficulty. That's our problem, not the patient's problem. Our thing is potential. What's the potential? So all the surgery we'll go through and laser plastics, you'll see later how I correct the cornea with the laser. But these are lensoplastics today, we'll, we'll talk about Here we are yeah. in this patient, wonderful patient, extremely high myopics, uh, palm first keratoconus, very high keratometry, deep chamber, fuchs dystrophy. And like all our patients, there is no anesthesia other than numbing drops. Is that right, Eva? Yeah. How's your comfort level? And an itch for otherwise. Lovely. And she is very anxious, and yet she elected what all patients do here is no anesthesia, just numbing drops. I've operated her amazing husband 17 years ago. Uh, a multifocal toric cataract technique at that time. And he's still doing how, Eva? 2020. Lovely. Love and here she is 17 years later. She found me for her cataract. Eva, anything you want to say? I'm still inside your eye. No, it looks like the eyeballs and a mouth. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it just, uh, I guess I'm afraid I'll move my eye. Eye, please. Yeah. This one. It's not that bad. Super. So Aisha, any questions at all? So you saw we are working on a deep chamber. Now what I'm gonna do is very important. I want to also make sure there is nothing hiding under the incision. See the sweep? See the sweep, some incisional sweep. Because in a deep chamber, anything can hide anywhere. You want to be very finicky. The lens is on axis with the two hand technique. And we're placing the rexus. It's perfect in the center. Perkinger images look great. Eva, coming out, congratulations. That's it. We are done. And look at the incision, how it's holding. Don't move back for his second eye. We already connected his first eye from basic ectasia with lens phase lensoplastic technique. Doctor, how's your comfort level? And as all patients, no anesthesia. In fact, he is beautiful. <laughs> Wonderful. How's the experience, doctor? Pretty good. Lovely. Anything you'd like to say to doctors who are watching? Beautiful. Are you pleased? Perfect. And if you can see, that's excellent axis. Can you see that, Aisha? Right on axis, we have been very finicky. Even a complex case like this, we want as much as we can get for him. And if you see here, that's the LASIK ectasia area on top. You can see the orange line of ectasia here. To the LASIK line, we're going to come out now. That has been a pleasure. Congratulations, coming out. It is very, very important. You're seeing how that's becoming optically less important. Correct? Mm -hmm.